Mwa! Demons and aliens and portals and spirits. I want to talk about these things today. It's nothing new. Probably as far back as you can go in recorded history, there will be accounts of demons because it is part of history and it's global. All over the world they have demons. You ever see um, the Bruce Lee movie where his parents were afraid of demons so they put those mirrors in the window? What are they called? Like Bakwa or something? Or is that something from the UK? But I mean, all over. There's demons and spirits all over the world. Some places call them a jinn, like the genie in the bottle. That's some kind of a spirit or a demon, but they call them jinn. It's D-J-I-N-N. -N. And there's other names for demons. Japan is obsessed with demons. Well, they don't say demon. Well, they have demons, but they also say spirits. A, a weird thing about, again, weird Japan, they believe in a kami. K a M I. Uh, I don't know how else to say because that's how you pronounce it. A kami, and what a kami is is this giant spirit, whatever that means, that looks over Japan and protects it from harm. I don't know how did that work in WW2. How did that work in Fukushima? I don't know. But they believe that. They believe that a spirit protects them. It sounds like false idol tree to me, but I'm not judging that. But it's a weird thing. Think about them. They have Godzilla. They have the giant um, mech suit thing. You know, people are getting robot suits. But they all—they also believe in a kami, that there's a spirit that's a savior, a big giant communist robot. No, a kami. K A M I. Dragon Ball Z uses this. They say it in Dragon Ball Z, the cartoon. It says the guardian of the earth is kami, like of the whole earth. So they have it represented by that green piccolo man and he's the kami of the earth which is just an alien now I want to stay focused on demons but I do think it's unusual that do you know any other nation in the world that feels like it's protect that uh, has believed for like centuries because they have Shintoism it's a their pagan nation that they believe that they not everyone but they believe that they have a kami spirit that protects them that protects their nation um, <clears throat> Sounds like a demon. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I, I, you know, God sends angels. I don't know. Like uh, apostles cast out unclean spirits. I mean, there's a lot of accounts of a legion of demons was cast out of him. Seven unclean spirits were cast out of this woman. Um, you know, two demons and a spirit, a, a, a horde of. I don't know. But there's different. Like more than a person can be possessed of more than one evil entity or spirit. So, what are demons? Are they not uh, inferior beings to man because they're not afforded material embodiment and they have to latch onto man or something? They need something material. They need materiality to grab onto, to curse an object, uh, an animal, a place, or to possess people. I mean, if you read the New Testament, all the apostles did was establish the church, travel around, get in trouble, casting out demons and spirits. One of the examples I always use on the show that I'll try to get through succinctly and quickly, because you've heard it before, is that Paul the Apostle, there's a story in the New Testament. Did you know that the Bible is like full of demon possession and exorcism stories? Yeah. Did you know that was in there? I didn't until I read the thing. They're always casting out demons. It's like a Blumhouse movie or something. You just got to cast the guys from Supernatural as apostles and people will watch it. Just stick to this, just stick to the word. Get it right. So anyway, succinct, right? So Paul, so Paul casts a spirit that's good with money out of a servant girl that's owned by a wealthy family. That spirit that's good with money helped the family gain some of its wealth. So when Paul the apostle cast it out, they took him to court and he lost the case. So Paul got publicly beaten with rods because the court decided it was wrong for him to cast a spirit out of a woman. Can you imagine that? Yes, I can, because now people, like if you watch funny videos online, people have like a demon lover and they have this fake fantasy with a demon. I mean, there's tropes in movies and TV and video games and not just Japanese anime and manga stuff, but they do, they're loaded with it, but I mean, the concept of a demon lover, a half, to be half a demon or know somebody that's half of a demon. Somebody that's possessed by spirits that gives them powers and abilities. Someone that is possessed by a spirit or a demon that gives them powers and abilities that also um, 
curses them in some way, but they live with it. Someone who's summoned a demon or a spirit and they control it, so they say, and it tell, gives them advice and, you know, to help them with whatever it is they want to need, their wickedness. You're not supposed to summon demons. Um, stranger things, what do they do? They play Dungeons and Dragons and they do a summoning spell and then the Demogorgon comes through like a portal to their world. And then what happens in E.T., which is the inspiration for Stranger Things opening? The kids are playing Dungeons and Dragons. They do a summoning spell and then E.T. shows up. So this is where I bring E.T. and demons together in portals. Look at all the movies over the last decade and before that have portals. Look at Ghostbusters, the first movie. A big portal opens up and goes to the Gozerian and Stay Puft Marshmallow. And demons, they come out. The hose dogs, whatever they're called. And then, um, I mean, there's so much. Like, do I need to expound? Like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the guys have things that are like demons that are possessed them. There's so much stuff in popular culture where, you know, like, you get your powers and ability from something that's a demon or a spirit. Like, it's an object, it's a sword that has the spirit of demons trapped inside of your soul or something like this but these are all things that are they have sway in the world sort of if they can latch on to something you know, like demons whispering whispering in somebody's ear things like the screw tape letters i mean this is not a new thing but it's very popular now like if you look around your culture there's so much stuff about like i get my powers from demons or a spirit I mean, Japan is obsessed with spirits. Like, they have the spirit of everything. Like, there's the bean counting spirit. They're called yokai. And it's like their pantheon of spirits of things. Like, everything has this spirit to it. And then they believe in that. And I have weird things I can bring into this episode that are neither here nor there, because I'm here nor there, because I don't have answers to them. But there's weird stuff like, did you ever hear about an egregor? It's like when a bunch of people believe in something, it can create like a psychic entity that again is immaterial but it can have sway over the world and it's interesting to me that in you know in the not too recent past um, corporations changed the legal system so that a company could be considered an entity like it had sort of the rights as a person but an entity isn't a person you can go look up entity you can look up what an entity is or an egregor is if you want like a definition definition but I'm telling you enough about what I know of these things and it's the idea that if you believe in something enough, you can kind of make it exist. Like when people believe in their, um, you know, like when they, they go to DeviantArt and they fall in love with characters and you know what I mean? Like all this stuff. Like I'm not saying that's a demon, but I'm saying when enough people believe in a thing, um, they're, they're, they're building an egregor to this. And I wonder if Japan's kami, they, you know, they believe in this big, Thing that protects the whole country they have a spirit called a kami and they believe it's like a big i don't know what it looks like but they believe there's a kami of, a J of japan it's a spirit k-a-m-i and it protects the nation from harm and it's this it's like think about this there's a nation that is possessed of a spirit because they believe in it and if that nation is possessed of a spirit and the spirit has an egregor to it because the, the, they're making like a psychic entity um Japan's weird like their 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 pagan culture that you know what their beliefs were in the past was called Shintoism and they they have I just said this they have spirits for everything but it's just weird all right the weird Japan it just keeps getting weirder and weirder with you I worry about you guys how are we gonna get any more cute women in um, 7-eleven Christmas fried chicken and coca-cola commercials and, and sweaters with Christmas trees on them and stuff. You gotta make them. Japan has to make them. Men, Japanese men and women. I know, I'm not getting into Japan's negative population right now. But I can't talk about demons without talking about Japan because they brought so much into the popular culture, into video game culture, into the cartoon stuff. And now when you watch, because the influence of anime and manga has you know, like permeated the sensibilities of developing minds in the West for like, Whenever they print, started printing manga in English, probably like in the 80s or something. When did, when did manga start taking off? Or the digest section of the bookstores when we had bookstores was, uh, had like a whole big manga section. I bet whatever bookstores are left, like your Barnes and Nobles, there's a lot of manga now. But anyway, the point is, um, they love demons. They, they have demon lovers. 
they fall in love with succubuses and stuff. Like this is in their entertainment popular culture. I'm a half demon. I have a half demon brother. I'm possessed of a demon. I'm possessed of his spirit. And and, and always what? They give you powers and abilities and things. I'm possessed of this evil demon and I have to do the good that I can before it overtakes me because I've made a pact with the devil or other evil spirits or demon or whatever it is. But it's not new. Like all over the world they have this concept of a demon. Now we also have a concept of an alien like I talked about before with E.T. and Stranger Things. Like something that's not us and portals. So what happens when you do a summoning spell? Are you not opening with your intentions some type of a portal? This is in theory. I'm not saying you have to believe these things. But don't do them. I wouldn't. Don't try it. Um, but what it said is you want to summon a demon, you do the spell or the ritual, whatever it is, and you summon a demon. And then you can, whatever you want to do with it, it can possess you, you can call in a whole bunch of demons, whatever you want to do. You could try and trap it, like I'm going to do a binding spell on a demon and keep a personal demon that would be an oracle for me to lead my way through my life. I don't know if it's a good idea to be led through your life by spirits or demons. It's probably a bad idea. But there's some portal stuff. It, again, it's in the movies and pop culture. Remember Suicide Squad? They're like, here we go, here's Suicide Squad. It's terrible, they fought the putties. Now here's another portal. And she looks kind of like the thing from Ghostbusters. The Avengers, they use a portal. Um, in the DC Universe with the Justice League, that guy with the horns on his head, I forget his name, Calabac or whatever, or Desaad. I can't remember the DC demons. But anyway, the DC demon gets here through what? A portal. Thanos gets here through a portal. Thanos is a titan. He's uh, he's purple, which is the color is supposed to be the color of mastery, but he's also evil, and he comes from a planet called Titan. And he or no, he is a titan, and he comes from a planet that's well, I think it's been destroyed. But this is all this is all still demon stuff and portal stuff. And you know, if you want to get into the stuff I talk about, like at CERN. They, they made a statement, you know about the CERN, the CERN Hadron Collider? They made a statement a couple years ago that they said, hey, we turned on our collider when we finally got it to work, when owls didn't fly in it, to all kinds of other weird freak things that happened before they could fire it up. They fired up the CERN Hadron Collider and whatever experiments they've been doing with it, they said they may have opened a portal to another dimension and stuff may have come through. And I thought, what? That's so weird. Like, what are you guys talking like why is that your public announcement are you just messing with people why would you say that that's what they I don't know why they said that why'd they say that that's their news that they wanted to give you hey we thought everybody should know we opened a portal and we think something came through what are you talking about well to me it sounds like the past which I just told you about before we're all over the world they have some kind of concept of demon I know that uh, China can't have ghosts and things like that but they did have they would put these mirrors up every, uh, in different places and that was supposed to be protection from demons. And I keep wanting to say they're called Bakwa, but I think that's some kind of like Celtic spirit or whatever. So all over the world you go, uh, in, in different languages, they always, you know, in the jungles, in the deserts, in the forests, in the, anywhere in the world where people are, there's accounts of demons. Don't go to desolate places, whatever it is, or don't go, you know, like, like um, places that could be, you know, like, where bad spirits or bad things have happened and stuff like that. I mean, exorcism. It's like a, you know, like a, a genre of film now. I mean, maybe just, I don't know, is this Blumhouse making exorcism films? It's very popular again. But what also is, you know, people make fun of this, but do you ever see those videos where people talk about, they go on a talk show and they talk about having a demon lover and they're recounting a story that's basically like the story of, um, Dan Aykroyd in Ghostbusters where he's getting uh, filleted by a ghost. I don't know, they left that little scene in there. Isn't that so weird? Like, we, we, we animated this thing where a ghost is gonna go down on Dan Aykroyd. We have to throw it in, in a PG movie. It's in there. But people, like ghosts, I guess I could throw ghosts in, in with spirits and demons and stuff. I don't want to go through defining everything. I think it's enough that we have the definition of an inferior being that's not afforded material embodiment, so it has to latch on to something that has materiality, which is the world that we live in. And through us, or through animals, or whatever, they can have some kind of sway. Now maybe I got we into weirdness with the idea of an egregor, but people do believe in stuff like this. Um, 
all kinds of stuff you're not supposed to do, like sorcery and magic. I mean, like, there's lists in, in lots of holy books that say, don't do these things. Don't summon demons. Don't summon spirits. And then there's other teachings of other peoples of the world that say, you need to be possessed of a spirit. You need to have a demon. It's like some, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's in culturally different traditions of the past. But now, it's, but it's still here. Like, people still still uh, talk about demons and spirits and like how many video games have because of a thing that's a demon that latches on to like Venom really obvious example again Venom's an alien what's an alien it's not us it's not of our world it's from some other place some other dimension or something and how do they get here through some kind of portal because this is our world so again like a summoning spell for a demon um, or I guess you know I don't I don't know much about space, but doesn't Venom come from outer space and he lands on a planet, and it's basically like it's a it's a symbiote from another planet, but it's evil. I mean, like the man can control it sort of, but Venom can take him over and he bites guys' heads off, and there's a man inside that demon suit, as opposed to a demon inside of a man. Do you get it? Like the demon goes outside of the man, and the man's inside the demon. It's inversion of, you know, like there's lots of inversion in our popular culture. What's the thing? We have to do a postmodern deconstruction. What's our, we're, we're dumb. How do we do postmodern deconstruction? Well, whatever anything is, we do the opposite of that. So I don't know who invented Venom. I think it was some kid in a contest or something and then Todd McFarlane stole it and put it in a comic. He was like, let's choose that character. He didn't steal it, but he knew the character existed. So Todd McFarlane likes demons and devils and stuff. His character is Spawn. Spawn is a, is a man that sells his soul to the devil in exchange for power. And that's what happens with demon and spirit possession uh, uh, power. And what happens when people take psychedelic drugs? They talk about machine elves. Joe Rogan talked about, the, and other people too, talk about seeing like aliens sitting meditating, like the green, like these Martian things, like meditating. It's all over the place. I used to travel all over the country. And I used to see this everywhere I go. I, I came to hate aliens because this stuff never went away. I was like, here's another grabber machine that has like rubber balls with an alien on it. Here's a quarter machines that have like, what's all this alien stuff? I'm going into a Dollar Tree or some kind of gas station. Like, why would there always be some kind of alien thing there? Well, because it, I think it is popular and people like this. I don't know if ET, uh, the extraterrestrial, think about that, extraterrestrial. They make a point. They say he's an alien, but they say he's extraterrestrial. Decode the meaning of, the, of that ET, like extraterrestrial. Yeah, again. It's not us. It's not from here. It's from someplace else. Now, E.T. doesn't latch on to... Um, well, he does. He latches on to Elliot. They become bonded. So, E.T. and Elliot are bonded. And because of it, Elliot gets some of E.T.'s powers. The extraterrestrial. So, at the end, he gets to go back to his world, his dimension, whatever. But I'm not the only one to say this. But I've heard other people say it too. Because, you know, it makes sense. That, yeah, that, that E.T is the demon that gets summoned when they summon the demon in Dungeons and Dragons at the beginning of the movie E.T. Makes sense. And, oh, there's something else I wanted to say there with E.T. and demon stuff. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, aliens, when you take drug trips, giving advice, things or beings that you see when you're high. Again, what is this? You're not in materiality. If you're having... Um, I'm going to say psychotrop. If you're having um, a psychedelic experience, okay, and you're inside your own head or your mind and you're dreaming these things, you're present, you come out of it, you remember what happened to you, and you're like, I saw a meditating Joe Rogan alien and he told me stuff about life. And you come out of your trip and you're like, wow, I feel like my world has changed. Like there's, there's like different dimensions and planes of reality or something. Like what is this? Well, again, you have taken a substance made in lab, made in a lab, if it's like LSD or acid or these things, you're taking psychedelic drugs, to have the experience of what? Opening your mind and your perceptions. And then what happens? You're, again, you're hanging out, not with angels or God, unless something goes bad in your trip. And like this, this happens when people have bad trips. They're like, please, Jesus, help me, get me out of the trip, or send an angel or something. And then that's what gets them out of it. Um, not always, but not everybody would ask for such things, but people who do get help. Like, I gotta get out of this, you know, trip, because, again, 
You're in between places, in between worlds. Like, if you look into the history of what a goblin is, there's a story by Christina Rossetti, who was just a p poet of the time, and she has a thing called the Goblin Market. And there's stuff about being fairy-led and pixie-led. Again, these are spirits, demons, things that are not of our world, but at certain times, in certain ways, in certain places, the boundaries blur. So we can see parts of the immaterial world, and the immaterial world can have an influence on us. Does this have anything to do with portals or different places? I mean, Stranger Things, through all three seasons, keeps developing this till the portal to the other world is open and they're trying to contain it so it doesn't take over our world and turn it into the world of the Gemogorgon or whatever, the big dust monster and stranger things. So, people like, they love the power-ups of demons and stuff. Like here's a demon gauntlet or a witch blade or I, I know that's so lame and so old but Whatever's popular now, I think JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has something they have and, and it's basically just a demon that gives you powers, but they don't call it that, they have like their own word for it, but it's just, the, it's just the same old concept of being possessed of something, a spirit or a demon or an entity or whatever, and that gives you powers and or it, you know, makes you feel good, gives you orgasms or something, whatever, whatever nonsense it is, it's in the popular culture again. And the other thing about being sympathetic, like, I mean, Japan is so, because they believe in spirits and all this stuff, they're so sympathetic to demons. Like, here's a story about a demon girl. Here's a porno game about, uh, you know, like, leisure shoot Larry with succubuses and getting them to blow you and stuff. And, and like, being half of a demon, like, Blade is part vampire. Blade the Vampire Hunter, Wesley Snipes. He's part vampire hunter, but he's also part human. So he's partially possessed of evil because his mother was a vampire. I mean, we can throw vampires into this episode as well, too. I mean, what does what what holds a vampire back? Like, you know, they don't use this anymore because they make vampires like the heroes now. But it used to be like, get be gone, evil spirit, unclean thing. Like, you couldn't make a vampire come out of somebody. But since the person was a soulless being that fed off the blood of the living to survive, um, this would keep that soulless being that was, again, possessing the body of a dead person, basically. So when you watch Twilight, um, uh, in order for Bella to join a family, she has to become a blood-drinking ghoul that has no soul that feeds off the living because that, by definition, is a vampire. Who do you want to be, Bella? Deja vu, I just said this to you. Who do you want to be, Bella? Do you want to be one of the Blue Bloods wealthy elite that feeds off the blood of the living? Or do you want to roll around with the dogs and marry Wolf Boy? I think I'll be a Blue Blood over here with the Cullens. Yeah, they're nice. They drink blood in a fancy way. They don't hurt anybody. They just take it from the blood bank. But the point is, they don't have, a vampire by definition is a soulless being that feeds off the life essence of the living. That's still in simpatico with demons and spirits or unclean spirits or, and again, we don't think about this a lot, but a whole bunch of spirits, how, how many animes have like, there's like a whole bunch of demons come out of a person and that's either the good guy or the bad guy. How many stories in like any entertainment now like that goes global, is where a demon is like a good or a helpful thing like the genie in Aladdin he rubs the lamp and he has control over a spirit or a demon or a jinn probably right isn't isn't in Aladdin or jinn that's what they call him so again it's a, it's a definition of a demon a demon that's controlled that grants wishes and you got to be careful because they're not good if you don't make the wish properly uh, you get you know like it won't work out for you so you got to choose your words wisely because these things aren't helpful i mean if they're forced to be helpful they'll follow their rules but if there's any way that they can mess you up, they will. So that's why there's so many movies and stories and it's like a trope of be careful what you wish for because if you don't use your words correctly, the, the demon or whatever will, or the jinn or the genie or whatever will grant your wish, but it'll, you'll get the thing you want, but it's like a monkey's paw. Like, oh, I won all the money, but my whole family's dead and I'm a potato in a chair and I'm rich, but I can't even move and somebody has to feed me and they're abusive and that's my wish and now I can't talk to make the rest of my wishes or whatever. I mean, so be careful what you wish for. Why? You would never do that. You you want to want the wishes then. You're just like, I wish this lamp was destroyed so it could never harm anyone ever again. And I want, and I, I cast you into the pit or whatever you would say to get rid of that genie out of the bottle. But to be honest, is it so that some spirits are supposed to be good? I don't know. I know there's the Holy Spirit in the Bible. That's like one thing specific to God that's given to us. 
That's one thing. That's way better than a Kami. Way different than a Kami. I don't, I don't want a big giant Godzilla mech suit robot spirit Kami thing to protect my country. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's in children's entertainment. Demon stuff, kids being friends with demons, summoning a demon. Um, I'm trying to think of examples of this from popular culture, but you know better than I do about these things now. I'm the man without a pop culture anymore. But we can go back through the past and say demons and spirits and all that ilk of thing have always been there as long as man has been recording these things. And um, then comes exorcism and getting rid of them and casting them out. Where did it go? I don't know. Sometimes there's even, like, if you read some things on demons, it'll say, well, the demon was cast out, and, and because the demon was cast out, and uh, even more demons came back and troubled them even worse because they didn't do things right or didn't believe in God or whatever is the reason uh, that the demon was able to overtake people again. And I just want to say this. Come here, you. Do you think that this guy is anybody you want to take advice from? That's right, at least you're being honest about it. You're trying to trick me and be deceptive by giving me something good and leading me astray. I think you better get out of here, Yoda. So anyway, do you want to take advice from this guy? I wouldn't. I know I just said it again, but... Like, you know he doesn't talk right? He talks to you in a funny way? He's a weird dude. But anyway, he's, I know he's a good guy in Star Wars, and he's like Yoda, Buddha, or whatever, Yod. I don't know. But anyway, he's supposed to be the frog in the well that helps the princess get the ball, you know? But, I don't know. Um, I shouldn't have this probably, right? It's evil. But what, look at the stuff kids play with. Like, demon toys. Like, I remember seeing a toy. The toy was called Lucifer. And it looked like Tim Curry from Legend. It was this huge thing with horns and he was wearing like a necklace of severed heads. And I was like, this is probably one of those toys for the adult collector market. But just the same, if you look around kids' toy boxes, you'll see all the stuff. I mean, I remember in the 80s, there was this thing called the Satanic Panic. And like, the Smurfs, uh, Papa Smurf drew a pentagram on the floor and did magic. And they didn't like it, because the Smurfs were supposed to be communists <laughs> or something. <laughs> Joking. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, magic in television is not a new thing. And again, magic and sorcery is stuff you're not supposed to do. How popular is Harry Potter? In Harry Potter, they they go to school with in a, in a ghost-filled mansion. Is there anybody in Harry Potter that's possessed by spirits or something, or a ghost, John Cleese or something like that? You stick his cut-off head up somebody's butt. Um, yeah, I mean, like you're not. It's not a good idea to enculturate doing magic because it's like not a good idea. But I mean, like it never, like it never went away. There's always stuff with demons. I didn't talk about aliens that much. But again, it's another popular thing, like like an alien savior, like the most simplest basic alien savior is Superman. Superman's from another planet, so he's stronger and better than us. So he decides, because it's his home here, he could just fly away into space if he wanted to, because he could, right? But instead, he stays down here on Earth because he likes us, and he's our protector and savior. I don't know, why don't you call Jesus and tell him to kill Superman? Tell him, you must leave this planet. The creator of all would take Superman and get rid of him forever. Why do you like Batman? Why do you like Wolverine? Look at Wolverine. Right from his inception, he has horns and he's the Wolverine. He looks like an angry guy. Now he's a popular pop culture figure. And the Dark Knight is Batman, who's your like James Bond, leather daddy, BDSM, you know, military industrial complex. And then you have stuff like this. This is Resident Evil, right? You're fighting demons and zombies and stuff. The dead possessed, the walking dead. What keeps zombies animated? They're possessed of demons, dead bodies taken over by demons. Even in China, I remember seeing old like 70s, a 70s horror film from China. And they had, they had, I don't know how to, like they had zombies in them, but they were like their version of a zombie. It was an undead thing that was animated and possessed of demons, but they were like mummy zombies or something. And they just kind of bounced around on strings. And the people are like, ah, we gotta get away from these mummy zombies. I mean, that's in China in the 70s. I don't think they were influenced by Romero, but it's this idea of something that doesn't have material embodiment that, that you know, like animates a dead body or whatever. The idea of, um, you know, like movies have this too, where they, they, they take the person's soul and it's captured and then they inhabit their body and take it over. This is, this is so old school. 
But there's also these concepts for alien stuff, like Life Force has alien vampires. Remember that old movie, Life Force? It's a Toby Hooper movie. And um, it's famous because the girl walks around naked the whole time, and the special effects are pretty good, and they're like highly stylized, and it's like a big budget space vampire movie that totally flopped. But when you see it, you're like, yeah, like, it's got production value. Like, why'd they do, why'd they do this? You know, like, I don't want to watch Life Force over and over again, but I know what it is. But again, this concept of aliens as, to me, the same things as demon is one I, I support. I think aliens are bad. I think demons are bad. I don't want anything to do with spirits because I don't care if they're bad spirits or good spirits. I don't know if I want them around. Send me angels, Lord, not fallen ones. Send me your holy angels that do things perfect because they love you and they want to honor you. That's what I'd want. I don't want demons. I don't want aliens. I don't want anything to possess me. I want people to get them out. And in the Bible, that's like, remember Beetlejuice? He's like, I got demons. I got demons running all through me. Because it could be multiples. Like you could, a legion, a legion of demons, that's a lot of them. And again, they're not us. They're like inferior beings. They want, they want this materiality and they're envious and jealous. So they help us, but they also destroy us. And then they want to move on to something else. Um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a sci-fi film, but it's basically about people being taken over and possessed and replaced by, you know, like not them. Like, where's, you know, where's your soul go or whatever? When somebody dies and body snatchers and they're replaced, they just like this, they're pod people. That's why we have the word pod people that just obey the hive mind. <clears throat> but, you know, if you want to take it back in, in, in history again, some people got punished for casting out spirits and demons and they took it to court and they won. They're like, you can't cast out our demons. Those are ours. You did that? Beat them with the rods. <laughs> um, the dark side of the force. I mean, it's such an obvious analogy to use Star Wars. There's a light side of the force and a dark side. Obi-Wan says, I'll come back more powerful than ever before. He never comes back. But what he was supposed to do, and Alec Guinness died, right? I can't remember. But what he was supposed to do was come back like Gandalf because Empire, I mean, um, Star Wars was a ripoff of uh, Lord of the Rings. So Obi-Wan Kenobi is like a Japanese British Gandalf because he's a samurai and his name is Obi-Wan Kenobi. And um, they're, they're sword fighter guys, but he's also Gandalf. So Obi-Wan Kenobi never comes back as, you know, Obi-Wan, the transcendent, you know, uh, with the Holy Spirit glowing around him and everything like that. That doesn't happen in Star Wars, but they put it in the first movie. I, I don't know why, like, I don't know why. Like, that's weird. Like, they never pay that off, like, ever. Like, they could have even paid that off now with, like, Ewan McGregor and the new Star Wars shit. Like, there, Obi-Wan came back, like, more powerful than ever before, and he gave it all to Rey so that she could go, oh, thanks for this, and just end everything. Ruin Star Wars. But anyway, what happens to the Sith Lords? They're overtaken by evil. They get possessed by the dark side of the force. They, 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 they want to switch bodies and possess them and stuff. Isn't that in Star Wars too? But they get the red Sith eyes and that's like, you know, they're showing you they become evil. They've let evil overtake them. Um, there aren't any good demons. Only in your Japanese anime and manga because they believe in the spirits of everything so much. And I don't know. It's, I mean, Japan is all full of their weirdness that's uniquely their own. And when they export it to the world, like, the same things happen. Like, now everybody's talking about demons all the time and stuff and being possessed of them. And I think a lot of it comes from kids growing up with anime and manga and video games. Not blaming just Japan, Japan but the influencers and, like, game. Like, this is probably full of so many pages of demons in here. And no, I don't have a subscription. This is somebody else that gave me this. But possessed of demons. Resident Evil, like dead things that aren't alive, cursed objects. What's that Annabelle with the doll? It's a doll that has a, a, a is has a spirit or something inside of it, or a demon, and it wrecks people's lives whenever the doll goes to a new house or something. Chucky is a guy, is Brad Dourif, and not Mark Hamill. I'm sorry. Chucky is Brad Dourif, and he. I'm not a fan. I'm just. I'm not against it either. But Chucky is is Brad Dourif and he does a voodoo ritual which voodoo is all full of demons and stuff this is one of those religions that talks about being possessed of spirits like you ever, like Bill and Hillary Clinton go on their honeymoon in Haiti in 1975 and he says the most profound experience of his life is when he saw a voodoo ritual that's what his that's what that's what he put in his autobiography I have it it's upstairs 
he said he said that was a transformative experience in life when he saw somebody get possessed by spirits in Haiti. And his state is Arkansas, isn't it? And Arkansas has a Baphomet on the state capitol. It's like eight and a half feet high. And the Baphomet is a statue uh, that is protected legally. Um, and like uh, uh, Satanists went after Netflix and I think they won or something because you can't use their religious icon uh, it, so specifically in your teenage witch thing so they just they just wanted money or something so they sued Netflix to get money for Satan or whatever they're just idiots um, but yeah I mean like that's weird right but demons um, it's not supposed to be a thing you're supposed to think is cool I don't think um, you're not supposed to be sorry Dan Ackroyd, Mr. Ackroyd, respectfully, sir, I don't think you're supposed to be filleted by ghosts. That's very funny. That's all it was, was a joke. But just the same, like, people are living this now. They're like, I'm crazy. I have a demon lover. And they go on talk shows and talk about it and stuff, and it's insane. There's probably videos where people talk about, talk to each other and, you know, like, um, chats or whatever, where they're like, my demon lover is... And they talk about their masturbatory experiences, fantasizing about... Uh, disincarnate beings which may or may not be real and having an influence on them but I don't know maybe if you believe in something along long enough you can make love to your sonichu because it will become a psychic entity with an egregor and you will not I mean it's disgusting right people are living this now I mean is Spongebob Squarepants a demon I, I this is just a joke but let me give it Spongebob Squarepants is a demon it's a uh, a, a sink sponge spilled with seed. I should have done it in my southern preacher character voice. It's an evil thing. It's filled with the seed of Satan himself. How can a, a, a sink sponge become animate except it's it's filled with filth and somehow is granted any kind of existence? I don't know. It's not. I don't. SpongeBob. I don't know what that is, but I don't think it's a demon. But it's nothing though. But again, like so is a demon. It's nothing. Like um. The apostles were given the authority of God. He's like, don't forget, I'm giving you this power. And when people say, how'd you cast out that demon? You got to say, God did it because that's who's the boss of everything. So now listen to the rest of the stuff the apostle has to say. And it's all about Jesus and salvation and to get away from demons and stuff. I mean, he got beaten by, he got beaten with rods for this. <laughs> and he cast this, and Paul cast the spirit out of the servant girl that was good with money because he was annoyed by her. He's like, get get out of her. And then it left because it has to it has to obey. Uh, if you serve God and you do exorcisms, the spirit has to leave. But even in the Bible, the apostles sometimes are like, we tried to do an exorcism. There was like a couple of us together and we just couldn't cast the spirit out and this threw us around. We had to leave. We didn't know what to do. And then Jesus explained, did I say this before? I've been talking so long. Jesus explained it to him. He's like, yeah, you got to like, that's like you got to do some prayer. There has to be fasting. And then, then you can cast those spirits out or those demons or whatever it was. And all throughout the New Testament, they're always traveling, creating the church. And while they do it, casting out demons, healing people of infirmities, casting out spirits, legions, hordes, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. And let's talk about angels because angels and demons fight each other. So who's the good guys and the bad guys? Well, some demons are fallen angels, right? I'm not sure how this works, but some angels are just fallen angels, and then there's demons, or demons are fallen angels, or fallen angels become demons. I don't know. But the point is, demons are evil, and they fight angels. And when people want to get rid of demons, they have to call on God to get rid of them. And when people want to be possessed of demons, it's probably the easiest thing in the world to accomplish down here. You've just got to want it and ask for it, and you're probably going to start to get itchy and have some kind of problems or think it's great. I have no idea why people would entertain such stupid notions but when you don't know what to do with your life and you don't know to call your father because it's planet daddy issue down here and you fear rejection from here or fear the you know dealing with the consequences of your life and why it isn't working out for you maybe some idiot solution is to I'm gonna summon a demon because I don't know what to believe in I don't believe in anything and maybe I I need to enlighten myself the Huxley way or the Timothy Leary way Timothy Leary I say this all the time he worshipped Lucifer. He said all the work he did with drugs and chemistry and psychedelics was for the devil. He said it openly, but he called it Lucifer. And he's like, oh, you just don't understand him. He's a good guy. What are you talking about? Timothy Leary made drugs in labs that make you stare at blacklight posters for hours and go, Bleh, or have good trips or bad trips. 
and it leaves you open to these other, I don't want to say realms because that's a kingdom, but it leaves you open to like these other dimensions or places that, you know, like where you can blur the boundaries between material reality and thoughts and images that are happening inside you and be taken over by these things, possessed of these things, unholy spirits, unclean spirits, demons, devils, witches, fallen angels, whatever it is, it's all bad news. Like, there's good angels and there's demons, and the demons and the angels fight each other. Why? Well, the angels win. They always win. Why? Because the demons are inferior beings that don't have the authority that it, when God, this is just in concepts of demons in the West, it's probably the same, I don't know what Muslim concepts of demons and stuff, but it's probably not that much different from Christianity. Like you're not supposed to be possessed by demons over there and they want you to believe in like God the Father, even though they say Allah or something, but it's still similar. They have parts of them, but Christianity really gets into the demon stuff. But this, there's other religious texts, I, there's so many, I haven't read them all, but think about the Vedas and the Hindu stuff and the Buddhist stuff. And there's, they all they all have demons. Like all of them have demons, and some of them have good spirits and bad spirits. Like, um, what do Hindus have? Like Hanuman, the monkey face guy, and then the different, you know, blue skinned gods and things, and six armed deities. These are not us. Like these are not anything we're supposed to. We're not supposed to give any worship or attention to a false. We, I mean like anybody on the planet. Are you really supposed to believe in a guy that had he cut his son's head off and replaced it with an elephant and now that guy has an elephant for a head and you're supposed to pray to Vishnu? No, that's that's idol tree. That's false idols. There's I mean I'm me, so I gotta say this to you, for sake of your soul. There's but one God, you have but one life to live. Don't play with demons. Aliens stink. Maybe Paul is a funny movie where um Simon Pegg and, other, and, and the other guy drive around with um, Seth Rogen as a stoner alien and it's funny but I wouldn't want to hang out with aliens and I don't believe in them as things that have material embodiment but since we're still talking about them what do you think about the future and creating like robots and stuff like there's different types of robots that are it's still about demons and aliens and stuff the thing think this because you know where I'm going beings that are not afforded material embodiment what if people get so bonked that they decide to make robots so that demons and spirits could possess them and then they could walk the earth and when you're talking about like robots fighting people it's not because they were programmed that way even though they could be to be kill bots but what if it's just an idea a bad one but what if you're just like i'm gonna make a, a robot and i'm gonna ask a spirit or a demon to possess it and that's gonna be my friend my lover my fill in the blank and then you've got like something that a ritual has been done or a portal or whatever has been opened, however it works. And then you summon, you know, forget about a cursed object. What about a cursed thing that can like, like it can be animated and move. You know, like did they make a movie like that? There's probably at least some kind of movie where a demon possessed some kind of, I know Ghost in the Machine, not the Kessler book. But there's, isn't there Ghost in the Machine with, it's a movie with Robert England where there's like a, I don't know, a laundry machine that eats people or something. I can't, it was stupid. But anyway, like the idea that a machine could be possessed of an evil spirit and it would eat people. Deathbed, the bed that eats people. It's a famous funny movie that was only uh, just come out in like the last decade, but it was like a bed that was possessed of evil. And when you got in the bed, the bed would eat you. <laughs> Freddy Krueger, he's a dead man that doesn't have material embodiment anymore. And he's like, people have horror rooms and they love their Freddy Krueger statues and figures and stuff. And he was a guy that was a murderer that when he was killed, he could still get you in your sleep. These are these in-between places, like in Christina Rossetti's The Goblin Market. I didn't explain that to you yet, so I'll come back to it. Um, she was just a writer in the past that wrote poetry. I'm not nothing against her, but she wrote a story called The Goblin Market. And in it, this woman is in these in-between places. And she goes to a market where she sees all the strange fruit. And she's like, I don't know if I should eat this or do anything. And then she finds out that like, oh, these aren't humans. These, I'm in some kind of weird space between worlds. Like, I'm fairy led or pixie led, and now I'm in the market where goblins are eating all the weird stuff. Everything's shaped like, you know, like I don't know, like Japanese toys or something. <laughs> but it was a goblin market, and um, it's again, it's just another example. I know I should. There's so much stuff. I'm just going back in the past because she's an old, an old. Uh, writer, poetress, whatever you call it. 
and it's like kind of a famous thing. No, people don't care about the goblin market anymore. We could talk about goblins too. Look at the, the um, fairies and elves and pixies and all the stuff we have from Europe of their like, you know, hobgoblins and bogarts and banshees. These are all things that are like, don't have material embodiment, but because of these, you know, like, lines between reality and the mental world or whatever you need to call it can be blurred and that's where we're impressionable and it's dangerous so what do guys like timothy leary and all his buddies do timothy leary who by the way worships it's lucifer he, he told you he loves the guy uh he said that <laughs> you know he they want people to take these drugs which is also bad because like your social engineers want you to take drugs too like bad people with you know, bad ideas take drugs and they're smart, you know, intellectually or, you know, like all this Huxley or whatever. And he was interested in psychedelics. He used to take mescaline. And then um, he wrote Brave New World in the future. Everybody's high all the time. And it, think about it. If you're high all the time, you're not more open and susceptible to whatever is being presented to you. I mean, is it like opening the floodgates to be like demon led or possessed or something like that? Uh, I don't know. Um, genie in the bottle the monkey's paw like again like i don't know if a demon is in a monkey's paw but it's like you know the story of the monkey's paw i think a lot of people do they teach in school probably even if you stay home for your uh, oasis learning but the monkey paw you it give you pull the fingers back and it, it, it gives you a wish here's the lady wishes to be rich so she gets a phone so she pulls the finger on the monkey's paw and curls it up or opens it or whatever. I forget how the monkey's paw works. But you, put, you either open its, one of its fingers or close them and that's your one wish. And everybody can have a wish. You can have all the wishes. It doesn't matter. But the lady wishes to be rich and then she finds out that her husband died at work and that's how she gets money. She gets the money from the insurance because he got ground up in a machine. Monkey's paw. Um, I, think it's the sa I think it would be the same thing with a genie in the lamp. I think it's the same thing when you would act like if you would do rituals or magic or sorcery or sig sigil magic where you do some kind of stupid Grant Morrison thing that he's trying to popularize where you make a sigil sigil whatever and you masturbate to it doing Crowley style sex magic and then whatever it is you want is put out into the universe because you're doing something that's a really in like at the most intense moment which would be your moment of orgasm you're doing some kind of act of creation even though you're just masturbating alone into a whatever and then you get your wish that's terrible. I'll bring Grant Morrison into this again. He, he brings you the concept of multiverses. He was a, a guy that loves Crowley. I don't know if he does anymore. But he was a guy that loved Aleister Crowley. So he put all this, this magical stuff in his comic books. And it became popular. Like Grant Morrison. Who's the, uh, the goth guy? Neil Gaiman. Um, Alan Moore. Grant Morrison. Lindelof, Aronofsky, these are all the same to me. They just, you know, they, they do nonsense. But keep a focus on the comic book by, guys. They brought in this idea of multiverses. And again, this is like, there's other dimensions and layers of reality and they expound upon this. But really what matters is our life here. This is our one life to live. You don't need to be getting, it's not beneficial to get high and trip on psychedelic drugs to open yourselves up to experiences that you don't understand what's happening. How many people have drug experiences where they encounter something and like, I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like my life has changed and, and it's like, we're all one and blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't, but it's just not really, in my opinion, not really anything life changing. Cause you're like, yeah, that happened, it was cool. And I remember I can tell you my experience, but so what? Some people that get serious about it do damage. Um, but yeah, like these are just concepts that are so old that you know, think about today. You know, you have like Boston Dynamics making kill bots and then Russia making their kill bots and China making their kill bots and then Japan's making love bots. Because if you notice, there's a difference in the AI that they're making. Japan's focusing on robots that are loving and affectionate that can love you. And every place, I mean, I'm sure Japanese make kill bots and kill drones or whatever, but their emphasis seems to be because you can see the, you can see their work. They show it. The robots are all like to be like a mate for people. <laughs> the Japanese people are staying home, I guess. They have negative population rate. Is it still happening? Uh, is it still, is it, you know, the same? 
But I don't know, like if Japan dies out, somebody's gonna have to live there. Will that, were there, what about that kami? Is that something that's gonna have to be dealt with? Is that like a demon? Uh, think about spirits of things in terms of gods and, and, and like Zeus and Poseidon in the ocean. These are things that people believe in and worship. And I don't know if they would have, you know, an egregor or they'd be able to create some kind of psychic entity because people worship these things. But I, I don't wanna, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does, but I, I don't know what to say about it, so I'm gonna let it go. I mean, Thor is a, a false idol. He's you got your superhero. He's not a ghost or anything, though. But Hades, land of the dead. It's not being dead is not the same thing. Uh, you know, like being in Hades and land of the dead is not the same thing as being here on this material plane and being some kind of a ghost or a spirit or a demon but these things are specific there's always been accounts all, everywhere about demons and stuff um, all over Santa Claus his elves what are they? Are they is this a demon? is this thing a demon? can you tell me this Yoda? Mm -hmm. elves are demons? yeah because Santa Claus isn't Saint Nicholas that Santa Claus, the guy that brings you toys and has elves? What's that? The elves aren't like pe like people like you and me that are short that are go live over there. Ah, it's got great benefits. I live in Alaska with <laughs> or Antarctica or wherever with Santa Claus and North Pole. No, I mean it's so weird and creepy. Like I don't know. Elves, fairies. Um and other cultures all over the world will have their sort of equivalents like the spirits of the forest, the spirits of the jungle, the spirits of the desert. Um, yeah. Orcs. They're not demons, but what are they? They're like um, bio-robot people that don't have God in their lives. So they sing, or is it goblins? They sing songs like Life Without Mondays. No, Life Without Sundays, because Sundays go to church. Why did I say Mondays? Think of Garfield. Oh, Life Without Mondays. Good. Garfield would like that. He hates Mondays. He's a slob. <laughs> a cat that eats lasagna? Yeah, I want to walk out in the yard with those shits. <laughs> What's wrong with your cat? Ah, oh, he likes lasagna. Uh, does he do anything? No. <laughs> he plays with the dog. What do you mean? The dog runs around him? Yeah. I don't know. Is Garfield, is Garfield demon possessed? <laughs> A, a lethargic demon possessed cat that just lives only to consume so that the, you know, whatever. I'm being silly, obviously, this is stupid, but... <laughs> I don't know how much further I have to go about demons, but... Vampires, they're not demons, but it's like the person's dead and there's something... Like they're soulless, their soul is gone, and in order to continue to become, you know, in, in, unless they turn to not, N-A-U-G-H-T, um, they must drink the blood, they must feed off the living. Is that not what a demon does to us? We're alive, we're here in material embodiment, and then when somebody needs a Blumhouse, you know, when Linda Blair needs an exorcism, or, you know, Constantine, as Keanu Reeves comes to your house and casts out demons, um, No, that's entertainment, I guess. But you know, who would want that? Like, get them out of here. You don't want that. Um, how long is a helpful spirit a helpful spirit till it becomes an unclean spirit that you need to ask someone to get rid of? As the world gets weird and they don't want people to do that or they don't believe in exorcisms, if these things are real, like, how do you get rid of them? How do you, you know what I mean? I don't know, have faith, believe, have God take them away. I mean, did I miss anything about Chucky I was saying before? Yeah, he does, a, he does a ritual to have his soul put inside the body of a doll. So this evil man possesses a doll, and it's his goal, it's Chucky's goal, Brad Dorff's goal, because that's who this is. You gotta think like Chucky. It's not a robot, it's not its own thing. That's Brad Dorff inside of a toy. You know, this is a man's, this is what the story really is. People, I don't think people think of Chucky and Child's Play like, it's like six movies, right? Like, I mean, he had kids. This is a guy trapped inside of a doll that has demon babies and they all kill together. It's disgusting. But this, the Ch Child's Play, Chucky, or whatever you want to call it, Chucky movies, the Chucky franchise, is Brad Dourif's quest 
to get material embodiment again by latching onto a person because he's just an evil disincarnate soul or something that uses magic and sorcery, which you're not supposed to do, in order to entertain you so that he kills people in funny ways and makes wisecracks. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly and his son. Ch Chucky. I think they're, they're aren't they redoing the Chucky now with Brad Dourif's daughter is now going to be the new evil, <laughs> you know, like, he's, you know, whatever. But the point is it's about possession. There's so many things, like how many TV shows are like, have that shit. Mo video games, there's so many things in video games where, you know, like you have a demon thing, anime cartoons. I, I have to end this now, I think, because it's like, yeah, I mean, what else am I going to throw in there? I can just keep thinking of things from our popular culture. Um. I don't know, I just wanted to do one about all these things. Mm, there's probably so much more to say on demons because you could just like nitpick and talk about all the, I just didn't, I didn't prepare anything. I just like, I just want to talk about this. So I hope you had fun hanging out with me for this uh, lo-fi chill jam about demons and aliens and portals and spirits and vampires and all this kind of stuff that has to latch onto a human and feed off of it or direct it or use our material embodiment to its end. And they were like, ah, oh, we'll be pals with it. Stephanie Meyer, she made Twilight. And then this other movie she made right after the Twilight things were done or in the middle of the Twilight movies, it was another Stephanie Meyer thing. It was about aliens from another planet that inhabit the bodies of human. And then you have to live with these aliens. So then it was, I mean, it was a, a love romantic thing where this, ladies in love with this guy but the guys has they all have aliens that are you know like aliens that don't have bodies that live inside them because humans say this is such a convoluted thing like but this is stephanie meyer's idea basically everyone on the planet becomes demon possessed but the demons are called aliens and now people have to live with these demons inside of them and the demons in love with the human but the humans in love with the other person's demon so they can't be in love with each other and it's like you're not in love with me you're in love with my demon and it's like yeah well your demon's not in love with me she's in love with that person over there so it just becomes like some convoluted japanese thing of unrequited love where everybody likes somebody else but nobody likes each other and it ends in a bloody bath of murder me senpai please <laughs> and then there's pewdiepie putting on a costume and jagging himself in the butt with things go away <laughs> but anyway I'm joking i know people love pewdiepie i'm not against him i just think he's a weirdo um bless him get it together man you millionaire. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's a Stephanie Myers movie. The whole thing with the demons. I don't know. I got. I lost myself there. But demons. Like Stephanie Meyer has a movie about aliens, where everybody on the planet has to take on one or two. Like some people have more than one alien inside of them. It's such a weird thing. I think it's called The Others. I know there's some other movie called. The, more movies have the same title, but. Look up Stephanie Meyer's movie, not Twilight, and you will find, like, read what it's about, or watch the trailer. Even the trailer of that movie is nuts. You're like, that's what this movie's about? Like, people are in love with these things that are inside of them, but aren't them, and there's, like, love triangles between two people, or there's, like, a love a, a, a quatrang between, a love quatrangle or whatever between, like, however many people. There's an octagon of love, and there's only three people standing there. How's that? Stephanie Meyer's movie that was her like hey if you like Twilight you're gonna love this weird like whose fan fiction is that messed up people that want to be like people I don't know weird and Fifty Shades of Grey that's not Stephanie Meyer's but it is soulless boring a whole hour and a half leading up to a spanking at the end that's stupid I don't know. Women have different sensibilities than men, I guess. It wasn't made for them. And if women like that kind of stuff, I don't think you should be watching it. Sorry, honey. I think it's bad for you. I don't think Twilight's any good either. She should have picked the werewolf guy. At least he was alive, right? But he's still... What's a werewolf? It's some kind of evil, cursed thing. Right? That's not... A, do you, it's not good. You're not, you're not supposed to want to become a beast man. <laughs> I know, like... We latch on to these things in our pop culture entertainment because they're power fantasies. Now that I have this, you know, ancient 
Japanese spirit in me because I got stabbed with the sword. Now the, the spirit's inside me. I have powers and it's a really cool video game or a TV show or all three. The video game, the movie, the cards, the card game, the, 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 the anime, the Super D anime, the fan, whatever. But the point is demons. Demons and aliens and Martians.